Well, happy Valentine's Day, Ray. And happy Valentine's to you too, Jeff. So we're heading north on Route 103 in New Hampshire. Yep, we're currently in the town of Newbury, which is where you'll find Mount Sonope. Hey, that's right. You know, I've actually skied that mountain before. Oh, are we going skiing? No, uh, what we're looking for is actually just a rock on the side of the road. Okay, well, New Hampshire is the granite state. Right. There's plenty of rocks on the side of the road and really everywhere in New Hampshire. No, I get that. But the rock we're looking for is special. It's got some graffiti on it that's been there for decades, and it's really tough to miss. Okay, so we just passed Rainbow Garage, so our rock should be coming up on the right. And, yep, there it is. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, there's a boulder maybe 10 or 15 feet from the edge of the road. Uh, it's about three or four feet tall. The flat face of the boulder is painted maroon. And in white letters, <laughs> it says, Chicken Farmer. I still love you. Hello, I'm Jeff Belanger, and welcome to episode 287 of Valentine's Day Special Edition of the New England Legends Podcast. And I'm Ray Osher. Thanks for joining us on our mission to chronicle every legend in New England, one story at a time. We can't do it without your help. So please reach out to us anytime through our website with your own local tales of roadside oddities, haunts, aliens, monsters, and other weird history. Also, if you know a local independent radio station that's looking for unique content, please reach out to them and invite them to join our growing list of radio stations who broadcast the New England Legends podcast. The bigger our community, the more strange stories we can collect. Now, before we explore this odd message of love for a chicken farmer (laughs) that got here on the side of Route 103 in New Hampshire, we want to take just a minute to tell you about our sponsor, New Odd Herbals. Ray, I have an insatiable sweet tooth. Oh, me too. I mean, sugar calls to me at every turn. I get jittery. I need a fix. You can reach for the cookies or those way over-sugared soft drinks and bottled beverages. Yeah, I could. But when I hit the afternoon slump and sugar craving, now I reach for root berry tea from New Audi Herbals. That's one of my favorites, too. Root berry tea is a great combination of root beer extract, orange peel, sarsaparilla, honey, lemon, licorice, spearmint, and other all-natural ingredients. And... It really does taste like root beer. It does. Now, during these cold winter months, I tend to drink it hot, but it's amazing and refreshing served cold as well. It's the sweet treat I crave without all the calories and sugar. Now, a regular 12-ounce can of root beer has about 180 calories and 36 grams of sugar. Wow. By the way, it's recommended that we consume no more than 24 grams of sugar in a whole day. Now, with root berry tea from New Audi Herbals, you get the treat and save all those calories and sugar. It really adds up. Let New Audi Herbals help support your healthy lifestyle. Check out the New Audi Herbals website to see all of their great products, and you can get 20% off your order when you use the promo code LEGENDS20 at checkout. Visit NuWadiHerbals.com. That's N-U-W-A-T-I Herbals with an S dot com. Okay, Jeff. Chicken farmer, I still love you? <laughs> yeah, that's what the rock says. Now, when you said graffiti, I was picturing some spray-painted tag on some rock. But this is like real paint. Yeah. Like with a bucket and a brush. Yeah, that's that's it. Not only that, but you can tell this isn't the original. Uh, you can see from the edges that someone else is maintaining this. That's true, too. And it's been here for decades. So we're not talking about some teenagers sneaking out here and spray painting something in under a minute or two late at night. No. I mean, someone is out here applying coats of paint, letting it dry, and coming back to finish it. (laughs) All true. This is one strange roadside oddity for sure. And there's even a town decree protecting this graffiti. And though few agree on why the message was first painted here... Most agree that it did first show up in the 1970s. So this has been here for almost half a century at this point. (laughs) Yeah, I think your math is correct. (laughs) Some of the stories that we heard here around town is that there was once a chicken farmer who went off to war and his love painted that sign for him. Another version is that there is some star-crossed lovers who couldn't be together. The girl came from a wealthy family. The boy was a humble chicken farmer. Her parents forbid the relationship, so she painted the sign for him. <laughs> so you've heard of an urban legend, right? <laughs> of course. Well, I think we can call this one a rural legend. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Countless cars and trucks have passed by this rock over the last 50 years. I mean, think how many eyes have been on this rock. So many people have seen this message. And this rock even made it into one of the chicken soup for the soul books. Now, to find out how this message got here, let's head back to 1973 and find out what happened. 
It's late April 1973. Tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree by Tony Orlando and Dawn is the number one song. Disco music is heating up around the country, and Richard Nixon is in the White House. Life here in Newbury is quiet in the spring. People have been coming to ski at Mount Sunapee Resort since 1948, and of course, Lake Sunapee draws crowds in the summer. But in the spring, it's pretty much all locals. Living right across the street from where we're standing here on Route 103 is the home of the Rule family. It's not a large home, but there's plenty of room in their yard for planting a vegetable garden and for (laughs) raising chickens. It's just a few chickens for fresh eggs, but there they are strutting around the fenced-in backyard. The Rule family have kept chickens for years. Living in the house is a local high school senior named Gretchen Rule. Like a lot of high school seniors... The whole world is ahead of her. Now, being a senior is an exciting time for sure. There's proms to think about, college, jobs, so many possibilities. But then, one day, Gretchen wakes up. And as she leaves her house to go to school, a painted message on the face of the rock across the street from her house catches her attention. Oh, look at that. The painted message reads, Chicken farmer, I love you. (laughs) Now, at first, Gretchen doesn't know what to make of this message. But soon she figures out that someone has a crush on her. And there's that message staring at Gretchen every day that she pulls out of her driveway. Chicken farmer, I love you. Chicken farmer, I love you. (laughs) Odd, but, you know, kind of sweet. Gretchen has some ideas as to who her secret admirer may be. But beyond this bold, painted gesture, this Newberry Romeo keeps his mouth shut. The message painted on the flat surface of that rock across the street from Gretchen's house endures the seasons and the years. And that brings us back to today. Wait, what? That's it? (laughs) We didn't spend much time back in 1973. No, we didn't. But there's plenty more to this high school crush story. Got it. Okay, I guess we all know how high school crushes go. At the time, you feel like your world will end if the object of your desire doesn't love you back. Sure, yeah. But time passes, you meet new people, and those crushes can feel kind of silly in hindsight. But pain on a rock sticks around long after the crush fades, right? I mean, right? Sure, usually. But then something happened to this painted sign in the early 1990s. After 20 years, the paint had faded quite a bit. But then one day, someone painted over the sign and even made a one-word update. One day, passers-by noticed a fresh coat of paint that read, Chicken Farmer, I still love you. Whoa. (laughs) So has this high school crush carried the torch for 20 years now? Now, We're not sure, but the updated message got locals buzzing about that very idea. This graffiti was something adored by many locals, but not all of them. No, not at all. In April of 1997, one uppity, new-to-the-area local made some complaints to the state of New Hampshire about this graffiti-covered rock. The state responded and painted over the message with a reddish color that was sort of close to the color of the rock. And suddenly, the message was gone for the first time in almost 25 years. And that's when the people of Newberry stepped up and said, well, wait a minute. (laughs) Nobody paints over graffiti in our town without our okay. It was down only a few days before someone repainted the message. Chicken farmer, I still love you. And now it's back on the rock. But repainting wasn't enough. So the people of Newbury signed a petition that said the chicken farmer's sign should be left alone forever. The petition was submitted to the state of New Hampshire, and the state agreed to leave it alone. But paint fades, especially in New Hampshire winters. And underbrush grows. Yet, someone took care of this rock. When underbrush and trees continued to grow around it, someone would cut them back. When the paint faded, someone would come repaint it. After 50 years, it's safe to say that this rock is now a town landmark. But the question remains, who painted the original? This rock seems to make the news, you know, every few years. Yankee Magazine once did a feature on it. Uh, Newspapers have covered it. New Hampshire Public Radio did a great story on it back in 2017. Now, Gretchen Rule Hamill now uh, has commented in these various articles and stories that she has an idea who her former admirer was, but she didn't want to say. The New Hampshire Public Radio piece even went on to say that they were able to track down someone who said they knew for sure, but they kept the name private. But obviously someone painted the original. Obviously. And that's part of the charm of a legend. If we knew the whole story and everything about it, it would never match our sweet imaginations. Because it's vague, we get to think of all the backstories there could be behind a simple message of love on the rocks. 
happy Valentine's Day, no matter how you do or don't celebrate this day. And that brings us to After the Legend, where we take a deeper dive into the story and sometimes drive off course. After the Legend is brought to you by our Patreon patrons. This amazing group of people helps us out with all of our expenses it takes to bring you a new story each and every week. They understand that great content isn't free. For just three bucks per month, that's like buying me and Jeff a box of Band-Aids for all the scrapes and cuts we get searching for New England Legends each week. (laughs) Our patrons get early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. Please join us at patreon.com slash New England Legends. All right, so uh, if you want to see pictures of the chicken farmer, I still love you, Rock, you can go to our website and click on episode 287. And I just want to mention that a lot of the details of this week's story came from the November 5th, 2011 Valley Times article by Katie Beth Ryan, as well as the New Hampshire Public Radio piece done in 2017. Uh, And by the way, someone even made a short film about The Rock, uh, a fictional film, and you can can see it on YouTube. Um, So uh, have you ever done something bold I mean, yeah nothing like this right but nothing that has lasted mm-hmm. but i suppose i've i've always done things you know what i did for a while was i'd, I'd put a single rose in the locker of the girl i was dating oh and then i didn't for like the fourth or fifth one and she got really mad at me and it Wait, was so like thing. is it different girls they were different girls that i was dating throughout they, high they school they always got the rose I just, they always got the rose but then i was like that's the ray want, Osher tag right but i don't want to do that for the new one because i did it for every other one this one's special oh and then she's like where's the rose wow and I, yeah we got into a big argument about that i'm like i didn't want to do it because i did it for all the other girls i thought you'd appreciate that just looks like your mo at that point yeah right exactly and then she's like where's my rose that and i don't know i mean like being at somebody's window at 3 a.m. when it was okay to with do With a boombox. So. When it was okay to do so. It's not <laughs> I've so seen much, this movie. It's frowned upon now, but... In your <laughs> eyes. That, I mean, d- dumb stuff that I've seen in movies yeah. time and time again. We repeat I would, it. I would repeat it, yeah. yeah. So I've done plenty. You? Uh, sure. So, um, you know, I, I think we've all done that. And, and not only that, uh, Valentine's Day, right? Yeah, yeah. Where are you supposed to send flowers? Where? Well, to, to your loved one. To your one. loved one, sure. But, but where? What what venue? To your home? Oh. No, not to your home. No. If they're getting if they're getting delivered, hand delivered by the, the flower company, yeah. they have to be at work. Why? Because it's the, the visual Show. gesture, okay. right? So, you don't so want to like, be alone at the door. You want all your coworkers to see. Oh, oh look at you the, are loved. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look Somebody at that. Somebody loves you? Look that's at that, <laughs> right? So that's the thing. And so all these flowers are arriving at the office, right? And And, oh, God, help you if you didn't. <laughs> right <laughs> that's true you should get something in the presence of other people it, it's yeah, but it's, that makes sense this this holiday man this hallmark holiday killing us uh absolutely killing us so when i um i i may have uh, graffitied a bridge or two did you when yeah. i was in high school never did that no. and there was a girl uh in my class who she's like i've always wanted to see my name in graffiti and so you know i did it i recognize this is not uh, legal oh, or <laughs> it's not a good idea and the adult me would never do it but um you know it was it was I, it felt like a victimless crime, you know. Sure, but uh, but anyway, no. So yeah, no, I've I've done that, but I didn't go repaint it. <laughs> Twenty five years later, and, and here's the thing, right? And this is what we just don't know, and this is part of the charm. So who is repainting it at this point? The chicken farmer. I still love you. Yeah, and and you know you, you see the sign, like it's not neatly done. You know, it's not like someone really measured and took their time. Yeah, but at the same time, it's it's a brush with paint. This right. isn't spray paint. Like this is someone painting each letter, which yep. means you're standing out there probably for a while. I would say that person's pretty old school too if they're using paint. In Absolutely, brush. yeah. Otherwise, it would be a quick can of yeah. spray paint if it was a child or, right. or a young adult. Sure. So, hmm. so someone has always it was always that kind of paint. Yeah. So someone took their time to to make the message. I mean, we're not talking hours, but like you know something. But. Uh, is that same exact person still maintaining right. it all these years later? Or is it like, well, now it's a town landmark. It's fading. You know what? I got a bucket of white paint at home. I'm going to, I'm going to hit it this weekend. Just keep it fresh. Yeah. You well, know? what's the, what, what was the rainbow thing that you mentioned that we passed by? Oh, the rainbow garage. What is it? It's just, it's just a landmark. That's 500 feet before. Okay. It's not a restaurant or nope, anything. It's just okay. a garage. It's just 500 happens to be the, the last commercial building you'll see. Right before you pass the okay. rock. Because I was going to say, if there was any kind of commerce in the direct area, I would ask some of those store owners, if because it's a landmark, people right. are traveling up there to see it. Sure. If it's a restaurant, 
you want to keep people up here. So it's still there. Look. And and, and what it, the rock too, like it's just it happens to be a very flat face. It looks yeah. almost like a small billboard and it's right across the street from where the rules once it's lived. It's just begging to be painted it's on. It's begging to be painted. And so uh but I love the fact it's 50 years now. 50 years. Yeah, that's a long Someone time. has maintained this. So this woman's like close to 70 then. Yeah, she's still she's retired. Yeah, she's retired oh, now. This and, guy, if it's still the same guy, he's got to reach out. I, I, Unless so she's still married. She knows who it is. Like, I've, I've read the articles. I've heard the interviews on New Hampshire Public Radio. I promise you, she knows exactly who it is, and she is not going to, you know, a spider. call it a spider just, spider just crawled walked. by. <laughs> Scared me. <laughs> and, and she's not going to say who it is. And even the couple people in town who knew, like, you know, went to yeah. high school there and knew back then, they're not saying either. And And... It would sort of ruin it. I mean, if we said, here's the person's name, and, and right. he's like, oh, yeah, I had a crush on her. I did this crazy thing. And then the town took over from there. Like, I don't know. It's not nearly as good as, like, someone's carried the torch for sure. 50 years. Chicken farmers, she doesn't have chickens anymore. Yeah. Right? They just had chickens as, as a family. And it's, it's just, and it's a simple message of love, right? Or it's illegal. It was like her her uh, junior, um what was she? How old was she? She was a senior she was high senior. school. She was graduating. Yeah. So maybe her algebra two teacher. Come on. Right? And You're killing this. She doesn't want to throw him under the Day. bus because that's a whole legal thing now. <laughs> if she was a senior, I know she, who it is. she could have been 18. She could have been. You were yeah. right. still frowned upon. I don't know. I know. But I'm, I'm going with love. I'll go with love on this. Yeah. So I, I love that. Um, and, and it's weird chicken farmer, right? <laughs> it, it didn't say like, you know, hey, Miss Rule, I still love you. Yeah. It's Oh, that almost rhymes too. Right. This guy was not much of a poet. No, chicken farmer. He didn't think that one out. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. It's great. And then, but I love how sometimes like this, a roadside oddity goes from being just an act of vandalism yeah. to a protected landmark. Right. From the state of New Hampshire. Not right. just the town, not just the region, not the county. Yeah. The state like, said, yes, you can keep that. And the town was like, no, it's we, we like it. What? I mean, I know it's graffiti. It's, a, it's absolutely vandalism. However, <laughs> we like it and we would like to keep it. And I would love to hear the story from that out of town or that new to town person. Yeah. I would love to hear what they're doing now and how upset they are. I, I, I don't know where in town they live, but they probably have to pass it often enough to see it and be like, well, let's just fix that, you know? And again, see, that's, and isn't that the difference between being a local, right? Locals are like, well, that's our rock, <laughs> right. right? And out of towners are like, well, why wouldn't we, we have this cute and Newberry's adorable, yeah, right? It's yeah, yeah. pretty town, very clean, you know, all that stuff. Um, so someone new to the area would be like, I want it perfect. Yeah. Right. I don't want any anything so let's right, right. let's make it perfect by painting over that rock and they you don't see that that's actually you know half a century of history right um uh, tied to like someone's crush and who can't relate to that like like yeah. some grand gesture for a crush it's like joe the hobo that lives downtown don't complain about him he's been here for 50 years he's an icon he's part of our town yeah <laughs> he's an icon we we take turns you know giving him beer yeah, money exactly. you know <laughs> uh but no I, I, that's, that's what i like that's a good story. valentine's story absolutely something simple something easy that's it just like you <laughs> Please subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcast because it's free and we don't want you to miss a thing. Also, take just a minute to post a review for us. Those reviews go a long way in helping others find us. We're in this together. We can't do it without you. No, we can't. And thank you to our sponsor, New Audio Herbals. Thank you so much to our Patreon patrons. And our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, Chicken Farmer, I still love you. <laughs>